Hi, I'm Peyton Reed, director of Ant-Man, and now Ant-Man and the Wasp, and this is Notes on a Scene. So this scene is the Wasp kitchen fight, which um, is a crucial part of the movie. Hope Van Dyne, played by Evangeline Lilly, and her father, Hank Pym, played by Michael Douglas, they are constructing this quantum tunnel. There's one crucial component that they still need for the machine. And because they've had to go underground and uh, keep one step ahead of the FBI, they're now forced to deal with these black market uh, dealers to get their technology. This unfortunately forces Hope to don the suit uh, as Wasp and take care of business in her own very particular way. <laughs> She flicks a salt shaker. Here, a henchman is getting away, and watch this. Right here, there are these particular PIM technology gauntlets that shoot shrink and grow discs. She blasts this blue grow disc, and I'm gonna show you the point of contact here. There goes the salt shaker, and boom, right here. This is a PIM grow disc. It makes contact with the salt shaker, boom, and there you have a gigantic salt shaker. Bang, it takes care of this guy. Now, obviously, to shoot this scene, we had our actor run, and we actually had uh, a piece of plexiglass that he could run into so we could get a little bit of the indentation of his, uh, his face here. And obviously, CG-wise, we put in the giant salt shaker later. The key thing in this was to sort of keep things moving really, really quickly. Here comes yet another guy into the kitchen. She spots him, he picks up a knife. We see he throws the knife. This is a combination of Evangeline Lilly in a suit. And then when we get here, we do a little bit of what's called motion capture. And that's what you've seen a million times with a, an actor in a suit, maybe covered with ping pong balls for good measure, so that we're shooting her and digitally capturing her and, and doing all these movements. Now, let's talk about this. We used to call these, we still do, disco trails. In the first Ant-Man, we wanted to do something that sort of keyed off the comics where you see Ant-Man shrink, and in a single panel of the comics, you'd have this sort of uh, echo effect. And it's something we started to refine with Wasp, and we wanted to figure out in the movie version, kind of paying homage to that thing that you saw on the comic page, but still having it appear photorealistic. So we do a transfer here where our guy here is real, but the knife is digital. With visual effects, the world around you wants to be real and tactile because we're not in outer space, we're not in Asgard, we're in the real world that we see every day, so it has to feel real. So we'll shoot elements of a, of a real knife with motion picture uh, uh, digital capture and also still digital capture just to get the textures uh, correct so they feel real. People ask about Wasp, you know, what part is Evangeline, what part is stunt person, what part is uh, motion capture, and what part is pure digital animation. And it really within, it can change within one shot. Like this shot here, at a certain point, uh, is not motion capture. This is all digital animation. We scan Evangeline and scan the suit, obviously, and all the textures in the suit. Uh, and then our genius visual effects artist can create an entirely digital wasp here, but from photographic elements. A little side note here, when we shot our actual scene, our stunt gentleman threw the knife and held his arm out like that. We needed to know he was gonna throw three different knives, so we had to digitally change his arm, so he threw it and then brought it back down. A stupid detail that you really would never know, but his arm becomes digital as it goes down there. So here, one of the keys was, this is the first time really the audience is gonna see her in action in macro, and we wanted to sort of demonstrate here the wings and the whole apparatus. So the wings as they come out, watch just sort of the, the flexibility of the wings and the movement there. In the early comic books, the wings are organic and they actually come out of her body. That just seemed gross to us. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to actually make it part of Pym's technology that he does. So here, really, it was important for the artists to get the mechanics of that so they felt real and tactile. But also, it was really fun to really fracture time and slow it down and see that she's so fast and nimble. She can not only dodge one knife and a second knife, but then sort of literally be a blade runner and run across the knife itself and then as she's doing that, spot the next thing. The key to the sequence is really to keep constant things coming at her and she's able to dodge and, and deal with them and then see ordinary kitchen items and, and figure out how to use them as weapons. She dodges that one, activates her wings, and then has to dodge and then run here. She spots this handle on this pot here and takes this guy out. So in this shot of Wasp here, um, this is a digital Wasp with, of course, Evangeline's face in there. 
We didn't want to make a movie where when she's out of the suit, it's Evangeline, and when she's in the suit, it just feels disconnected. It was always important to go to close-ups, and you want to see the actor. You want to see Paul Rudd. You want to see Evangeline Lilly in there to keep the personality alive. We do a thing uh, called the array, which is we sit them in a chair with a lot of bright light, five different cameras on their face. And anytime they're in the suit in the movie, we run through and shoot their face, saying the lines, doing the expressions. So we have this whole catalog of uh, expressions and lines that we put into them as digital characters. So uh, again, important to see Evangeline there in the mask. This is almost entirely a practical top shot. These are real vegetables. Some carrots and tomatoes here, and then it becomes digital here. So that's a digital tomato you see here, and then keeping track of her moves, dodging all these vegetables as we go through. So one of the things we're able to do with um, Ant-Man and the Wasp is really try and put the audience down there so that they hopefully can feel what it's like to be shrunk. And not just standing around, but really involved in these kinetic, acrobatic fight scenes. With our motion picture cameras and then our visual effects still cameras, we'll shoot on a set or a location. So you have all these surfaces here. You have the wooden cutting block and you have the stainless steel counter. And we'll tile these things so that we actually have photographic capture of all the different surfaces. And then we'll take these and create digital environments and so we can get our virtual camera down where we just physically wouldn't be able to get a real camera down and treat them like gigantic sets, but put the audience in the middle of the action here as she flips and slides under this thing here. We're here with a digital wasp, but real Evangeline Lilly face. And we come out and play her POV as she's sliding toward this cutting board. And then we go wide. So it really is like shooting a normal action sequence, wide shots, medium shots, POVs, all that stuff, but in this macro environment. Again here, always crucial to see a close up of Evangeline reacting to the impending danger here of a meat tenderizer. One of the deadliest weapons you can find in a kitchen. And now she just dodges this thing and then, as we learned in the first movie, when you're small, you can bullet through things and be very dense and powerful. She bullets through a bag of flour here. That's a practical bag of flour that we actually put a little charge in and pew, shot flour out. It's augmented with some additional digital flour and a digital wasp there. The stuntman actually did get a face full of actual real flour. That was crucial to the scene. <laughs> And here now in this sort of like dust of flour, you see wasps come in here. One of the cool things about the process, as I said, we storyboard and we pre out these sequences, but there's a, a tremendous amount of fluidity to the process that you can come up with a new and maybe better idea or a different idea for a sequence midway through the process, even late in the game. If we feel like we don't have enough coverage or we don't have enough of her POV. And I say that because this shot was one that we really wanted to have. And it's a really simple shot of just her coming through the flower, spotting the next bit of action she was gonna take care of, and really like shot A leads to B, leads to C there. We use a lot of things when we're macro, we call them moats, like dust moats. When you're sitting in a room and maybe the sun's coming through a window, you know how you can actually see dust floating around. It's really important to make this look as photographic as possible and what those things would look like if you're really small and playing depth of field to really sell the idea that, that she's tiny. Now, this is interesting. To me, hopefully to you too. One of the fun things too in visual effects reviews is to sort of see, here's the first pass and there's fire and, and my response was, you know, more fire, let's really get this guy. They're able to really control the level of flame here with the, the digital fire. There's actually a little bit of practical fire on his arm right here, a little bit there, but it's augmented by digital fire. This is a, a couple of my favorite shots in the sequence. So she flies down here and lands and skids. And it's a very, very simple effect. But one of the things we always look for when we're creating small Ant-Man or small Wasp is trying to make the physics seem correct. Here, it was, it was important to sort of have her fly in, land here, and slide like an Olympic skater. And, you know, that's the scan of Evangeline Lilly. That's her moving with motion capture and her face digitally put in the mask there and these little sort of touchstone shots within these sequences where you really feel the weight and the physics uh, that hopefully register as correct, bring it to life. Then she leaps here and as she leaps grows and you can see this sort of what again we were calling the disco trail effect. As she leaps up toward this guy, you see multiple versions and it's meant to sort of, you know, it happens so quickly that the eye sort of sees these different frames there. And then she grows into a stunt shot. <laughs> 
part of it is not just demonstrating her shrinking and growing and flying capabilities. Evangeline and I talked a lot about her fighting style, that it was very precise and decisive and, and lethal, really giving the audience the idea that she's been waiting a long time to do this, and now that the time has come, that she really kind of enjoys it, and she can take care of business. Every single shot we shoot in the movie, let's say it's a simple shot of an actor moving and talking, uh, we shoot the shot until we get it right, then we have the actor step out and we do what's called a clean plate and we do the exact same camera move with no one in it. And at the front end and the back end of that shot, we move the camera around the edges of that frame and we tile it. And what that does is it gives us flexibility to change shots and move digital characters within the shot later in post-production as we're editing. So here's an example of that. Here he's swinging and originally in the plate, our stunt person is here full size. You can still see that he's got an eye line to her there. We decided to shrink her down in post-production just to add you know, more excitement to the fight. And then we grow her back at this point. She comes in here, and then this arm here is digital. So we this, this is all digital wasp here, and we've animated the arm coming up to grab. And then here, it segues into our actual stunt shot, where she physically blocks his arm. So there's a digital handoff in that shot, I believe, in one of these frames right here. It becomes so seamless that after a while, you get really used to the shot and can't remember exactly what frame it is. <laughs> So that was a fun thing to do, that we could design these fights really specifically uh, and shoot them that way on the set and then continue to augment them all throughout post-production. And of course, all throughout the, this sequence, still in the background is our friend, the gigantic salt shaker, which this is another thing when you create these scenes where they shrink or grow something and it's done, you're stuck with it for the rest of the sequence. So then suddenly you have to animate this gigantic uh, salt shaker in the back of the shot there. Visual effects artists love it. After this punch, this becomes just sort of quick cut action fighting. And that is Ingrid Kleining, one of Evangeline's stunt doubles, and she's amazing and can do these incredible high kicks. She's fast and she's lethal, but also there's sort of a, a balletic quality to the way she moves. So the idea was that this character be smart and decisive. It was a pleasure doing business with you, Sonny. She goes into that transaction with the money, she just wants it to be a normal, above-board transaction. But when things uh, uh, go awry, she's prepared to deal with it as a last resort, and she does.